Hi everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Millennial Cynic with me, Sarah. I do hope you're all keeping well. Apologies for the delay since the last episode and I hope you'll excuse my slightly dodgy voice as I'm still getting over a very stubborn cold that just won't seem to shift. Anyway, let's get to today's topic, shall we? So last weekend we heard Mary Lou Macdonald state on RTE's This Week in Politics that when the votes are counted at the next election that she will speak to all parties to form a government. This admission has caused critics to quickly point out that if Sinn Féin went into government with either of the current lot, that, well, it wouldn't exactly be the massive change people are seeking, and indeed would be more akin to the current lot looking for power at all costs. She did also say, however, that while she is open to speaking to all parties, that the best outcome would be a government for change, which would not include Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael, and that certain parties might not be the best fit with Sinn Féin. This part seems to have been glossed over in the articles recapping the interview though. But either way, the comments are worth taking a look at and examining as they do bring up some important talking points. So first, let's take a quick look at the current government parties and their stance when it comes to Sinn Féin. I think we can ignore the Green Party here as I think we can all agree that the next election will be more about survival for them rather than another go on government benches. I spoke about this in the last episode, so I won't labour the point here, but it certainly does seem as if the writing is well and truly on the wall for the Greens, and they'd be lucky to return a handful of candidates to Dáil Éireann next time around. I personally can't see them surviving the substantial rural vote, or indeed the working class vote for that matter. Either way, the Greens are very much the junior partners in this current government, so even if a miracle happened and they did somehow retain all of their seats, they are on the periphery of government formation talks. Fine Gael, on the other hand, are very much worth discussing here, and they have seemingly very firmly shut the door on any talks with Sinn Féin, saying that it would be like mixing oil and water. If Fine Gael have been consistent on anything, it's been their tactics of attacking Sinn Féin at any and every opportunity. They even entered this grand coalition with long-standing rivals Fianna Fáil at the last go-round just to avoid Sinn Féin getting into power. They are even already floating the idea of a transfer pact with Fianna Fáil in the next election to keep Sinn Féin at bay. I can't see this position changing anytime soon, however, I always say, never say never. Never say never, because quite honestly, we can't predict the next two years until the next election. Cracks are already forming with barbs back and forth between government parties. Will they be able to hold out, or will they be sick of each other by the time the next election comes around? Never say never, because quite frankly, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see the allure of the gravy train overpower any of the current government parties. And never say never, because I have zero trust in anything Fine Gael say. If Leo Varadkar told me the sky was blue, I would look outside to check. To be fair though, the last two points are true of all government parties in my opinion. In saying all of that though, I would find it highly unlikely, not impossible, but highly unlikely for Fine Gael to entertain the idea of being in government with Sinn Féin. I just feel that although Fine Gael are polling poorly, that they have that arrogance and that ego about them that would stop them from propping up a Sinn Féin-led government which, let's face it, is looking like the likely outcome of the next election. Unless, of course, government parties get serious about health, housing, and the cost of living. Yeah. But yeah, I think they may fancy their chances leading the opposition and sticking it to Sinn Féin at every chance they get, which is something they do seem to enjoy, but only time will tell. Fianna Fáil, on the other hand, have in the past ruled out Sinn Féin and yet are now seemingly open to talks with anyone, which is quite interesting. They are polling poorest out of the three biggest parties and definitely feel like they are scrambling. As of right now, they are heading up the worst performing government departments in housing, health and I would add education at this point given the massive teacher shortage and the knock-on effects we will see from that. They have also been at the centre of controversy recently with the Robert Troy saga echoing back to the nod and wink days of Fianna Fáil that most would like to see gone forever. And of course, they are also trying to rehabilitate Bertie Ahern. On top of all of this, Michal Martin's time as Taoiseach is now up with the handover to Leo Varadkar due to happen on December 17th. So why are they open to Sinn Féin this time round? Well, firstly, like all government parties, I wouldn't jump to believe them, 
They said they would not go into a grand coalition with Fine Gael last time round, only to ultimately get into bed with them. Like with Leo, if Michal told me water was wet, I'd run the tap to check. So who knows what they will actually do, but if we do take it as truth that they are open to talks with Sinn Féin, why now? What's changed? Well, I think the poor polling for one thing. At general election 2020, everyone was surprised by Sinn Féin winning the amount of seats they did, finishing second overall in that regard, but Fianna Fáil were top. By only a single seat, mind, but still top. They are now, however, facing the reality that even though all government parties are polling badly, they have now lagged slightly behind Fine Gael. Perhaps they are seeing a future where government parties fall further, thus necessitating the need to look to Sinn Féin if they want to remain in power, as combined with Fine Gael, they may well still fall short of the numbers needed. Perhaps they are also trying to figure out who the lesser of two evils is when it comes to Sinn Féin and Fine Gael, which coalition partner will do less damage to their polling and their core voter support. Going in with Fine Gael has seen them drop quite far from the heights reached at general election 2020 after all, so perhaps they're thinking the electorate might view them more favourably if they remain open to the most popular party. So interesting times ahead to see where these parties actually stand and indeed will their stance even matter come the next election. As I said, the housing, health and cost of living crises don't seem to be abating and that spells trouble for a government desperately trying to control the narrative that they are what's best for the country, that they are the adults who are sensibly guiding the country, even if a lot of us can't see it. Now, for the record, I do intend to vote Sinn Féin at the next election. So I am somewhat biased here, but only because I am so sick and tired of the current regime that seemingly only serves itself and its friends in high places. I would like to see Sinn Féin do well, not because I have any particular fondness for them, although I would be a fan of Mary Lou Macdonald and Pierce Doherty in particular, but because they are the only real alternative right now. I also have a lot of time for the Social Democrats, Roisin Shortall in particular and a few others, but they would be very much a junior player in any formation talks. But make no mistake, if Sinn Féin show themselves to be just the same as what we have now, just in a different guise, then my vote will go elsewhere. So with that said, on to the main event, Sinn Féin open to all parties. Okay, let's take a look at what Mary Lou actually said and how it's been interpreted. So at first glance, it seems a little problematic. I don't think it would be a stretch to say that the people who are intending to vote Sinn Féin next chance they get would rather see the back of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael, so to see Sinn Féin say they are open to talks with them is more than a little disheartening. But what did Mary Lou Macdonald actually say? Well, if you were to believe the RT News article recapping the discussion that took place on RT's This Week in Politics, you might be thinking that she said from the get-go that she will speak to everyone and that a government for change was merely lip service. Upon actually watching the interview, which I'd recommend by the way, the order was slightly different and a lot of the context was left out of the article. She opened with her hopes for a government for change, without either Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael on government benches, while acknowledging that it was in the hands of the voters. Fair enough, really. She then went on to say that if push came to shove, she would be open to talks with the other two major parties. However, again, a salient point was left out of the RTE article, which was that she herself had reservations about whether a common ground could be found. Again, fair enough. To me, on the surface, her remarks make a lot of sense. It's the sensible adult in the room approach, the mature voice, so to speak, that even though you may not agree on everything, that working together for the benefit of the country is more important. And that for Sinn Féin, being in government to enact the change they want to see is the ultimate goal. And while that is kind of admirable, I am also a cynic and have trust issues when it comes to opposition parties and their promises. I did believe Labour would burn the bondholders after all, and we all know how that turned out. I also feel her statements, as evidenced by the RTE article recapping the interview, can be easily misconstrued and the points missed. Voters from the younger generations are so sick of the housing crisis in particular that they're a bit backstreet boys about their view of Sinn Féin. They don't care who they are, where they're from, what they did, as long as they actually deliver on their promises to make housing more affordable and fix the glaring issues that Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil seem hell-bent on ignoring. 
not quite as catchy as the original, I'll admit, but you get the point. Other voters, older or perhaps those voters lucky enough to have secure accommodation, are not all as forgiving of Sinn Féin's past, and yet some are, for the very first time, considering voting Sinn Féin. Why? Because at this point, for a great many people, anything is better than the other two parties. But those votes are very much in the balance, and headlines like this one will not engender a great deal of trust in those wary of Sinn Féin, but wanting to vote away from the two parties who may as well be one and the same at this point. If you are considering a vote for a party you would ordinarily avoid due to your personal view of them in order to find some real change, well, hearing that they're open to talks with the very parties you want to avoid may make you rethink your vote. And let's be honest, that thought process holds true for every potential Sinn Féin voter. If it seems they are happy to go into government with the very parties you want to avoid, why give them your vote? And this is why, for Sinn Féin, messaging is so important. More important, even, than it is for government parties. People are used to Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael and the Greens saying the wrong thing, saying the silly thing or the downright insulting thing. Those for those parties explain it away and those against are given more ammunition. But since they are the government, they can get away with that bit more, as they know only a general election can remove them fully. But for Sinn Féin, a gaffe or a mistake can cost them dearly. While their core voters will remain, it's the new voters, the precarious voters, the -the on-the-fence voters, that will make or break Sinn Féin's aspirations for government, and saying the wrong thing at the wrong time could prove very costly for them. And I'm not saying necessarily that they made a gaffe here. If you watch the interview, I feel that Mary Lou speaks very well on the matter. She makes her points clearly with seemingly no room for ambiguity. And yet the headlines focused on her admission that they will talk to everyone, ignoring her scepticism on how fruitful those talks may be. And this will be Sinn Féin's problem going forward. Mary Lou MacDonald replied to a tweet questioning how this makes Sinn Féin any different from the government parties, telling them to listen to the entirety of what she actually said. Now, in my mind, Sinn Féin's Twitter team might have been better served to back this up with a link to the actual interview or a clip of the relevant part. Not everyone will seek out long interviews, but if the relevant short clips are made available and easily accessible, then more people will see what is actually said, rather than the spin, and be able to make up their own minds. Mary Lou also spoke about her party being match fit and ready to go from day one if elected. I certainly hope that is true because A, I want to believe they are a real alternative with real ambition to fix the problems and create a fairer Ireland, and B, because if they don't, they will be relentlessly hammered by their critics. Sinn Féin won't be allowed as many missteps as Fianna Fáil or Fine Gael, so they absolutely have to start delivering, and quick. In the meantime, they need to be spotless and crystal clear in their messaging. They need to forge a path to a real alternative government by openly engaging with the other opposition parties. They need to fully distinguish themselves from Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil, in particular their shared traits of perceived corruption and cronyism. They need to lead by example and show how different they will be if elected. Actions speak louder than words. Only time will tell how this will all play out. As it stands, the next election is two years away, but anything can happen between now and then. Who knows what alliances will form or falter before the next election. We can but wait and see. One thing I know I am hoping for is a real change for a fairer, more equitable society, and hopefully Sinn Féin will be the ones to deliver. If not, we'll need to find a new party to rally around because we can't keep letting these issues and crises get worse and worse. Thank you for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed my musings. If you did, be sure to throw a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more from me. You can also follow me on Twitter for some real-time ramblings. Until next time. Slong a foe.